So I live in Rochester, New York, which just so happens to be the hometown of the late great actor Philip Seymour Hoffman. And funny enough, he and I went to the same high school together. Well, not together at the same time. There's probably a handful of years in between us, but I can remember being in elementary school or middle school and hearing about the actor from Twister coming in and talking to some of the upperclassmen that were in the high school and thinking that was such a cool thing. And just within the past few years, a sculpture was created by David A. Anand and set up over at the George Eastman House in downtown Rochester of Philip Seymour Hoffman. And since I'm in the process of building a life-size 3D printed statue, I figured this would be a great opportunity to try and see if I could create a digital scan of that statue and then run off and 3D print it and share it with all of you here. And to start the 3D scanning process, I'm gonna be using my iPhone using an app called Polycam. And first I'm gonna be testing out the LiDAR sensor functionality, which is using the sensors on the back of the phone to actually create a virtual scan of that statue. I then went and did another scan using the photo mode in the Polycam app that allows me to get a much more detailed scan of the statue. And since I also have a DSLR camera, I figured I'd also try my hand at taking a whole bunch of stills of the statue at different angles, which was probably over 200 different images that I took of the statue that I'll be able to use and upload into Polycam's website to actually generate a 3D scan from those digital images. All right, so I'm using Nomad Sculpt for this next step here, which is bringing in the 3D files directly from Polycam here so that I can take a look at them, modify them, make them solid, make any adjustments that I might need to make with them. Now, you could basically use any app that you want, but this is just one that I find very useful and it works on Android and iPad devices here. So here I'm looking at this first LiDAR scan and initially here it's looking okay, but it's because we have the textures from the 3D scan turned on. And I can actually come in here and turn those off here by coming under uh, the shading and enabling the matte cap. And here you can see that there's really not a whole lot of detail that was captured with the LiDAR scan. Again, that LiDAR scan is great for scanning really large areas, but not so much capturing lots of little details here like this, what we're seeing. Next is the actual photo app function built into Polycam. So this was using photos taken from my iPhone to actually create the digital scan. And immediately I'm already seeing that this is gonna be looking a bit better here. The nose and details are captured in a good bit more detail, even with this, uh, this function here that we've got enabled in the app. And then it even captured the little crevice there within the bag in the, the backpack there. So here is the ground area that eventually we'll probably wanna clean up. I don't necessarily need to 3D print all this, but again, if we wanted to see the detail of this, I can flip on the mat cap and just do a quick compare and you'll see, again, a good bit more detail that was captured with this versus just the LiDAR scan. Now here's the actual DSLR scan and it's already coming in a good bit larger in just scale. I really haven't really rescaled any of these, just repositioned them on the frame here of the iPad. And as you can see, it's much, much larger and the details on this are super crisp. So very happy and excited that it was actually able to capture the details using the uh, the DSLR camera there of the sunglasses on the t-shirt hanging there. You'll see here a spot where I missed the hair. So I'm gonna end up needing to clean that up and basically what I'm gonna look at doing is just chopping off the top of the hair from the actual photo scan that we did and moving that over here and remeshing this one onto the statue. In order to clean this up, I really just wanna remove the bottom as well. So I'm gonna come in here and use use the uh, trim tool to actually come in and trim off the bottom of the statue. So I'm gonna try and get this as close as I can to the feet and I'll probably just use the rectangle tool here to get in and slice this off. And as you're going in and filling this in, you might notice some of it not fully uh, coming clean. So you can come in and use the lasso tool if you'd like as well, which works extremely well. Again, we're just cleaning up the statue scan. I can also zoom in and try and clean up a little bit of the seam in between the legs so that there's a little bit more of an opening versus it just being connected there between the pants. Now to clean up the hair, I'm gonna be using the same trim tools here and I'm gonna be using that rectangle again to try and get a nice flat plane for us to work with. I just wanna trim that off, which will help fill in that hole that was there on the top from our 3D scan, which again, gives us a nice flat surface to work with. And then I can go into our other scan 
and actually go through the process of trimming off the top of that one and then importing it onto the other. So I'm gonna use the split tool with this and then try and line this up as best I can here. So I'll split that off. And then what we should end up with now is another file. Yep, there we go. So I can hide this and I wanna take this and then I'm gonna use the gizmo tool to transform this over to our statue and bring it up top here where I can rescale it and then get it placed on top of the head. And once I've got that positioned in the place that I'd like it, I can select both of the models and then I can do a voxel merge of these. I'm gonna bump up the resolution a good bit here, maybe to 500 and I'm gonna keep the sharp edges and voxel merge these together. Now I have one solid model that I can export out to my computer and start the 3D printing process. I also ended up creating a basic base for the statue to stand on by just creating a square and nomad and shrinking that down in size and merging that into the bottom of the feet. Now you can take this into your slicer of choice. I'm using lychee here to get this all supported and hollowed out and ready for 3D printing, which is where I wanna say a big, huge thank you to Elegoo for sponsoring today's video. I'm gonna be 3D printing this over on the Elegoo Saturn 2, which is an 8K resolution resin 3D printer, which has a great mid-size build volume that allows you to print some large things as well as some crazy detailed smaller items as well. And Elegoo just recently dropped the price of their Elegoo Jupiter, their large resin 3D printer that you can find over on the website. And now if you spend over a thousand dollars, you can use the code listed below to save an extra $50 off anything that you purchase. Now, if you're not already doing this, it's a great tip when it comes to cleaning off your resin 3D prints. So I haven't even rinsed this off or anything like that, but I have a bin full of pretty dirty IPA that's been used up a whole bunch here, but I like to initially rinse off the prints in this dirty IPA before cleaning it in the wash and cure station with the much cleaner IPA. And then I'll take the print and put it in the dual wash and cure station to get an even better clean. This is such a great trio between the Saturn II and this wash and cure bundle from Elegant. And here's a look at our Philip Seymour Hoffman statue all cleaned up, supports removed. This turned out amazing. I can't believe how well it captured the details from the 3D scan into our 3D print of a lot of the textures that we could see on the actual physical version of the statue created by David A. &A. And the best part is it was such an easy process that you can do yourself by just using your phone, going around and scanning some of the cool things that you might find in your areas where you live. I would definitely love to hear more about what you're finding and scanning and creating and sharing online. I'll be sharing the 3D version of this file over on printables.com. I'll have that linked down below. And if you're ever visiting Rochester, New York and want to see the physical version of the statue, just go to the George Eastman house and it's sitting outside by the parking lot as if he's walking into the theater to go see a movie or a play. And I also want to say a big thank you to all my Patreon supporters for your continued support of me making content here on the interwebs. If you're interested in things like my resin 3D printer settings, you can find those over in my Patreon. And I'll have some more updates on my Magneto statue build here in the upcoming weeks. I want to say thanks so much for watching all and I hope to see you next time.